places that we think of as violent manufacture virtually no weapons of war. And the places that we think of as peaceful and enlightened and civilized export almost all the weapons to the places that suffer from them with the occasional exception of a war in Europe as <laughs> happening right now. Um, and, and the justifications that are given for every war that it's defensive, that it's necessary, that it's humanitarian, that they're all lies. Um, and the notion that somehow war is normal and we have to struggle for peace is a fundamental lie. That every getting every war started takes a long, concerted, diligent effort to avoid peace and get yeah. the war started. We have now not just the understanding of what of what nuclear weapons mean so that we we do anything possible to avoid that uh, but we have an understanding of nonviolent resistance and how powerful it is uh, and how much greater it is as a strategy uh, in terms of success, not in terms of the purity of my heart and not dirtying my hands, but purely in terms of success as a tactic, nonviolent resistance, as we're seeing now in Ukraine, in combination with violent resistance, is more powerful more likely to succeed. The idea was, and, and we have followed through on it, was to create something that would do both nonviolent direct activism and education. Uh, so we do protests and put ourselves in front of shipments of weapons uh, and work with local governments to divest funding from weapons companies uh, and uh, you know, every kind of lobbying and agitating and protesting and demonstrating and interfering. And we do books and online courses and webinars and videos and training materials uh, and education of, of all sort. It was created to go after the whole institution of war, not just a particular war or a particular side of a war, a particular weapon, but war, uh, uh, the entire institution, because we looked at militaries uh, and how a tiny fraction of the spending, the money spent on militaries, could end starvation on earth, could end the lack of clean drinking water on earth, could create a serious attempt to slow down the, the, the ecological catastrophe uh, that's upon us. If you look at recorded history of the past five to 10,000 years, uh, war is quite sporadic. Uh, people will scream and shout that there's always been a war somewhere. Yes, but there's always not been a war, many, many, many somewheres. Uh, and many places have gone without war for centuries. Uh, many places have not known what war was. You have anthropologists visiting tribes in Malaysia and trying to explain what war is, what murder is, what rape is, and having zero comprehension. What do you mean? How could that be? We would never do that, right? And these are, ho these are human beings exactly like any other human being. Well, there are dozens of examples now of nonviolent resistance stopping oppression, stopping invasions, stopping occupations, reversing coups in a matter of days. Uh, and the success rate uh, is dramatically higher than the success rate for principally violent campaigns to resist oppression, occupations, et cetera. Both can fail. Both approaches fail all the time. There is no guarantee of success, uh, but there is a, a greater likelihood of success with nonviolent approaches and that could be built on. It could be an even greater likelihood of success if it were properly pursued. I mean, if, if either Russia or the United States had not spent the past 20 or 30 years trying to win over Ukraine to its side, but had spent that time educating Ukrainians on nonviolent non-cooperation in organized strategic fashion, Ukraine would be absolutely unoccupiable. Right. I mean, already with nothing but militarism pushed from all sides, you know, from within and from outside Ukraine, nothing but militarism, militarism. 
you still have people kneeling before tanks, standing before tanks, walking tanks back, talking people out of tanks, talking soldiers out of war, feeding soldiers and having them phone their mothers and say they want to come home. Solidarity, camaraderie, teamwork, uh, sacrifice, uh, the, the, the joy that comes from the work. That's what makes me do the work. Uh, it's just far more enjoyable than sitting around doing nothing. It's that humans were made to be effective, to accomplish things, to do things, to try, to struggle. You have to imagine Sisyphus happy pushing the rock up the hill. Uh, people, people aren't happy watching TV or hiding under their beds uh, or, or you know, despairing or blissfully ignoring things and hoping for the best. It, that doesn't make people have fulfilled lives. Uh, doing the work uh, gives you a fulfilled life. Mm -hmm.